Hey hey, it's Springles, and welcome back to the second episode of our Cobbleman playthrough. Now, this commentary is post-editing due to some weird audio issues I had as I was recording. I know I'm a robot and all, but the audio was unbearable to listen to. Hopefully next episode will return to the usual format. Also, I wanted to quickly say thanks for the support in last episode. Today, I wanted to gather some resources in the mines and explore around to see what I could find. In the last episode, I got my full team, and I was even lucky enough to find a shiny Lickitung. So in this episode, I had a lot to live up to. To begin with, I got to work on a mine near my stuff. I got to Y50 before remembering something from last episode. I had completely missed a dungeon while caving last episode, so I decided to head back to the surface and I looked around for a bit before finding the cave I had entered before. In the dungeon, I found an Impaling 4 book, Iron Horse Armor, a Quick Charge 2 book, a Music Disc, a Name Tag, and a bit of iron. I took a quick trip back to my chest to put things away and craft an iron pickaxe for my next venture into the mines. Also, this Digger's V was just chilling in my space. Cool, I guess. Maybe he was Lola's dad or something, but I left him alone. After a while of digging, I found my first cave, along with some lapis and gold. I made a smart decision to make a double chest to put resources into in case I die, and found my first diamond when going deeper into the caves. I briefly returned to the surface for wood, crafted a little bit of armor, and took the ores I had collected to be put away. I then went back into the mines where I discovered yet another dungeon. I took out the skeleton guarding it and destroyed the spawner. I discovered that this time, the dungeon had a saddle and a few more horse armor, but nothing significant. Going a bit further, I found a huge lush cave, and you know I was looking to take some moss and glowberries with me. Along the way, I found some typical cave Pokemon such as Golbats and Diglets, but nothing piqued my interest enough to catch just yet. I looked around, enamored with the site, as I tried to look for any resources. I took a few moss blocks with me, as I just love using it for builds, and I decided that I would bridge across to grab a few glowberries that hung on the ceiling. I even managed to find more diamonds nearby, which prompted me to start getting more and more greedy with exploring the cave. By this point I had no torches, and I wouldn't be finding coal this far down. With lava and glowberries as my only light source, I continued. I found another diamond on the ceiling, which I made sure to grab, although unfortunately it was only a one vein. Across the path I'd built, I found another diamond, which I had initially missed, and I made sure to run over and grab it, giving me two more diamonds. I looked behind me and saw a huge lava lake, which was the home to quite a few slugmas. I then looked at this pillar for quite an embarrassing amount of time, trying to figure out what I was seeing on top of it. It was a spinnerack just chilling. I was confused for so long, and I even threw a pokeball at it. I wasn't successful, like usual. As I was leaving the lush cave area, I found what would be my last diamond of the trip, and found a whole new lush cave area. I moved deeper into this new place and found that I even had a bunnel bee just chilling down here in the cave. Unfortunately though, there were quite a few hostile mobs I had to get rid of before I could explore forever, but luckily my stone axe did the trick, and I managed to kill the two mobs without any incidents. During this, I found a ghastly, which I used my last pokeball on and didn't catch as usual. As I was on the way out, I found a mineshaft, which, despite my best judgement, I entered anyway. With my sword broken, no torches, and rotten flesh as my food source, I walked around this mineshaft for a whole five minutes before finding some venomous spiders that I attempted to fight, but they ended up overwhelming me. I retreated away from the area, but one of them followed me to try and finish me off. I managed to kill it, but only with just half a heart remaining. I decided to cut my losses and just dig up to the surface. 
Back home, I put everything away and started smelting my iron. By this point, my chests were really disorganized, and I mentally noted that I would have to sort it before it got out of hand. I crafted a few more chests so that I could store ores and other things I obtained through mining. I took the boat and decided to explore what was right forward from the island I resided on. Here is where I decided I'd dedicate the rest of the episode to the Cobblemont aspects, as the first part had been mainly the vanilla Minecraft experience. And I had spent so long in the caves at this point, I was curious to see what kind of sea Pokemon I could maybe catch, and I have prepared 8 Azuri Bowls for the journey. On the way, I saw a Magikarp, but at that moment I wasn't too interested in catching it, along with a Shelter and a Whelmer. All were good options, but weren't Pokemon I liked enough to use my few Pokeballs on. I ended up finding another Pukumuku, who I started battling. I started with Ivy, as the type advantage would help a lot. Then I kept using Rankpoke, as the Pukumuku only used Taunt and Water Sport throughout the entire battle, and I slowly chipped away at his health until I thought it was low enough to have a decent catch rate. After a few more hits, I threw my first Pokeball at it. Which, by the way, every time I threw a Pokeball at a Pokemon in the water, I would have to get off my boat and dive under the water to throw it. It ended up breaking out of the Pokeball, so I rose back up to my boat to refresh my bubbles before I tried again. The next time I tried, I almost lost sight of it in the thick kelp, but once I found it, I threw the Pokeball and went back to the surface. It broke out once more, so I used one more branch poke to bring it to 6% health. I threw the third pokeball at it and went back to the boat. And guess what? It broke out. It ended up taking me four Pokeballs to catch it, so I had lost half of my Azuri Balls on just one Pokemon. I think it was worth it though. I think Pukumuku is really cute. He's just a little guy. A little fella. I know it's no Gyarados or Whale Lord, but I'm happy with my choice. I found a Veneri, who I decided would be my first battle I'd compete for XP. I threw out Swiper before immediately swapping to Miles, so I could raise Swiper's levels as she was only level 1, but still not die to the Baneri in one hit. As soon as I swapped though, the Baneri took out most of Miles' health with a single quick attack, and I responded with an Ember, which managed to burn it. We then exchanged quick attacks, leaving Miles at 3% health. I then just decided to spam and spam and spam and spam just quick attack, anticipating every round as Miles is last in the fight. It got to round 8 where Miles managed to hit a crit and defeat the Baneri. I am so glad it decided to just spam baby doll eyes after getting him that low. It dropped raw rabbit, rabbit hide, and a rabbit's foot, which was a little disturbing to say the least. I recalled Miles, feeling a little guilty he had just seen that massacre, and noticed Viper grew from level 1 to level 12, learning beat up, hone claws, and snarl. I continued on my boat quest and found an ocean monument on my way. Which, after getting jump scared by the Elder Guardian, I decided I'd put that adventure off for another day. After a little more paddling, I found something else that shocked me. A whole mushroom island lay just a bit further on. It was quite large, and I decided to make a beeline for the shore of it. I wondered what type of Pokemon would spawn there, and thought that this could just be the opportunity I was looking for. 
Just as I was about to get closer to the island, I found yet another ocean monument on the left side. I was already shocked from the amount of lucky generation here, and then I discovered the greatest thing I'd found today. On the Mushroom Island lives Mushroom Berry and some Miltank. They were so cute, and I just knew this was something I had to catch. I threw out Ivy and decided to have a better look at it before starting with the branch poke. I decided to bring Ivy into the fight as I predicted the Miltank would use mostly normal type moves, which Ivy is immune to as a ghost type. I was fortunately correct in this assumption and the Miltank could not do anything as I kept spamming branch poke. I saw a ditto on the island too, which I watched before remembering the fight at hand. I kept using branch poke and the sun was starting to set behind the scene. It was at this point I noticed an onyx has spawned and subsequently suffocated a definite cliff. I was a little confused at what I just witnessed and absentmindedly spammed branch poke like I'd done so many times before. So much had happened in the span of a few seconds and I was just so ready to welcome this milk tank as a part of my team. Eventually though, I got it to 16% health of a crit, and then I threw my first pokeball at it. I waited for the wiggle of the pokeball, and unfortunately it broke out on the third wiggle. I had three pokeballs left, and I was hopeful at least one of them would catch it. I threw another pokeball before looking around the island at my other options. Unfortunately, the Miltank broke out again and now it started to do damage. I used a third Pokeball, and finally... I had caught the Miltank. I decided to stay on the island until day as hostile mobs didn't spawn on Mushroom Islands. Rattata, Raticate, Zubat, Golbat, Paras, Parasect, Shroomish, and Breloomed all spawned here too. But with just one Pokeball left, I wanted to save it for emergencies. I crafted a few balls and got some mushroom stew for the journey home. I even found a Joltik here! It was so tiny and I couldn't help but consider using my Pokeball on it. I knew if I did, I would stumble into some Pokemon I would really want, and would have no Pokeballs to catch it with. In the ocean, I spotted something just on the floor. I dived in and swam closer to see an amethyst geode so close to the surface. I thought it was super cool how I had found so much cool generation just in the ocean alone today, and knew I should bring back as many souvenirs as possible. As soon as the sun started to rise, I decided to wrap up my journey and return home. All in all, I think this episode went pretty well, especially after I had worried so much about living up to the last episode with our first shiny encounter. I think this episode was a pretty good balance between the vanilla Minecraft experience, such as mining, and the Cobblemon exploration. While on the way back, I found more underwater structures I was considering looting, and as I moved closer to check it out, another Lapras spawned to my right. I looked at it for a little, remembering how I had felt the same to the Lapras from last episode and decided to leave it to not waste my last Pokeball. I got home and went straight to naming my Pokemon I had caught this episode. I named the Pukumuku I caught earlier Coral and the Mushroom Mill Tank Penny after Penny Bun Mushrooms. I crafted the rest of my iron armor, iron tools, and a shield. I then finished off the episode by placing some cobble around where I wanted to start building Sharpita's Bluff. And that sums up everything I did this episode. 
Once again, sorry I had to do this post-editing, but hopefully next episode there won't be any audio issues. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you wanna. I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye!